Chopin syndrome. I'm going to talk about the uh, different um, modalities of treatment and diagnosis. I will start by uh, the uh, anatomy. The, the condyle in the glenoid fossa separated by a fibrous uh, articular uh, disc. This separates the joint space into two uh, spaces. We have the upper compartment and the lower compartment. The lower uh, joint space is involved in, in rotation movement where the, the condyle will rotate, it's a hinge movement, and this will open the mouth into halfway. The upper compartment instead is involved in translation, where the, the, the condyle will translate, it will slide uh, along the, the articular eminence, and this will open full mouth also during the, the translation movement of, of the condyle. Uh, for the muscles, uh, we have uh, four muscles of mastication. The lateral, uh, the lateral pterygoid is involved in opening the mouth, where the masseter and temporalis medial pterygoid are involved in, in the closing movement of, of the mandible. For, for the TMJ uh, problems, be the patients approaching us, and we, have, we are seeing many cases that they have popping, clicking, Actually, we, we consider that the patient has uh, TMJ dysfunction syndrome when he is complaining of pain, uh, limitation of mouth opening, or deviation. Otherwise, uh, a lot of, of the population have this clicking. We still, we, we consider it a deviation from normal, but it's, it is not a TMJ dysfunction syndrome. Unless there is pain, there is limitation in mouth opening, or some deviation in the in the mouth. Now, most of our patients are uh, women between the age of puberty and uh, menopause. Actually, some research is suggesting that there is some kind of receptors in the disc for the estrogen. You may have noise, but you you don't have a TMJ disorder. Even if you have abnormal finding in the MRI or uh, X-ray the comb beam, whatever, still doesn't mean that you have a TMJ uh, disorder. Most people over uh, 40 years old, they, they have some changes in the, in the X-ray, but it doesn't uh, mean that they have a TMJ uh, disorder. So if we look at the condyle, uh, we can, in the X-ray, uh, it should be rounded and with, with uh, a white line uh, around it. This is this this also considered to be a remodeling. Remodeling, it's uh, a, a normal. It's uh, actually the bone is dynamic. There is a change, so there is bone resorption. There is bone uh, deposition. So this considered uh, a normal CBCT. Uh, doesn't mean that uh, this patient is, is asymptomatic or doesn't have pain. Actually, some 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 X-rays doesn't show any any problems, but still the patient is complaining. And uh, some X-rays shows that the bone has problem, but still the patient doesn't have uh, any any pain. As I said, actually we we say that this patient has TMJ disorder when he has pain when he has uh, limitation and, and, and mouth opening uh, or deviation, that's we consider that patient has a TMJ. So what type of uh, TMJ disorders that we have? We have uh, disorders that involving uh, the, the muscles, the muscles of mastications, or involving the, the joint itself, or it's as a part of uh, systemic uh, disorders can have, like any muscles in the body that can have, uh, have muscle ache, uh, restriction of movement, we can have uh, some kind of fibrosis. So one what not happen if, if we have uh, this uh, TMJ disorders, we have disc uh, displacement or uh, derangement. Actually the disc will, will go uh, into the advance in the anterior in, in which the, the disc is in, in wrong place whether it's going anteriorly or maybe posteriorly this can happen with reduction or without uh, reduction and, and reduction that means uh, it, it's involved with, with clicking 
that the, the, the condyle, it, it will, uh, the disc is already advanced, but the condyle while uh, opening, it will uh, take its position on the disc. So it will take up the, the disc and push it a little bit, it will stretch it, then it will take its place in the, in the middle of the disc, and that's the first click. And once the patient will, will, will close his mouth also, it will go back with it, it will stretch the disc to the back and the disc cannot go to its position. So it will leave the condyle and this will snap the disc back outside and this is the second uh, click. The one it's with, without reduction, that means the, the condyle, it's, it's, there will be a limitation of, of, of mouth opening. There is a locking that the condyle cannot take its position on the on the disc, so it will remain be behind it. So there will be a limitation of uh, mouth open. And if this is happening on one side, that means one is locked, uh, there will be a, a deviation, deviation toward the affected uh, side. You, you remember this when once there is a reduction, there is a clicking. If uh, the, without reduction, it's uh, uh, locking. So to just to uh, differentiate between the two. For systemic disease, we have uh, like arthritis and arthritis. If, if you look at the X-ray, there is some kind of destruction in the bone, but there will be uh, a lot of uh, degeneration changing, and also this uh, um, might lead to osteoarthritis. But the arthritis here in, 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 in TMJ is different than what happens in, in the knees. Uh, actually, in, in, in the knees, it's, it's, you, you need to, to, maybe it will lead to a change of, of the, of the uh, total knee change, but for the TMJ, it, there will be some kind of uh, regeneration. Uh, the, the, the reason that, uh, like the, in the knee, the, cart the cartilage there, it's, it's highly in cartilage. It's a uh, vascular, it doesn't have a blood supply, so it will not uh, heal or regenerate. But in the TMJ, it's a fibro fibrous cartilage that, that it will, to some uh, heart, it will regenerate. But the bone, it will not look uh, much normal, but the, the cartilage itself, so the joint itself, it will not look normal because there is some bone is, is gone, but the cartilage itself, it will, uh, cartilage will reform over, over the, the joint. Uh, and eventually the, 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 the joint will, the people will be able to open their mouth, the patient will be able to open his mouth uh, and eventually the func the, the joint will, will will function without pain so the patient will be open will be able to open their mouth without uh, having uh, difficulties so actually before they were teaching us that the TMJ disorder is related to bad occlusion so if you want to correct the TMJ disorder you have to correct the occlusion first but this is proved to be not true. They made a lot of studies and they will, a lot of patients with a very good bite still they develop TMJ problems and a lot of uh, people with very mal, with mal occlusion and still they don't show any, any symptoms. So uh, now it's, it's believed that it is not related to that to the occlusion but there are, are other things which we are going to discuss so for the etiology of of tmj disorder uh, I, as we said that it, occlusion it's uh, it's not one of them but we have we can start by by trauma either micro trauma or uh, macro uh, trauma when we say micro it's uh, blunt uh, injuries where uh, road traffic accidents, this, this trauma can lead to, to TMJ uh, problem. But at the same time, sometimes we, we see patients with, with, with fracture condyle and uh, still they, due to trauma, still they don't develop uh, this disorder also. 
for uh, micro trauma or uh, load and this is what we usually think it's the real cause of uh, TMJ uh, disorder and, and this, this micro tra trauma uh, includes the, the, the loading, the clinching, the grinding, the uh, opening for a long time like in dentist, yawning, uh, all these fall into the uh, micro trauma. Actually, there are people who are uh, susceptible or prone to, to the uh, TMJ dis disorders and this micro trauma, it will mm, act as a aggravating factor, factor that it will increase the chances of having uh, uh, TMJ disorder. So some, sometimes you see, see people with, with, with almost the same occlusion, I mean they don't have a mal occlusion and they have the same uh, clinching or load over the TMJ, but still they don't behave the same. Some will develop the TMJ disorder and some not. Actually, exactly the, the real reason behind it why it's it's not really known, but it's more have to do with genetics. Out of from the population, they are uh, uh, clenching their teeth at night. We maybe f more than half of the people, or fifty percent of the population, they are clenching their teeth. So, but they still they don't uh, develop the TMJ. Uh, disorders. It's, whether it's stress that causing this uh, cl clenching or or maybe they don't uh, go into deep sleep, they don't reach into deep sleep that these muscles will relax, then they will clench. So maybe this also will cause them stress because they did not uh, uh, relax much. So it is, uh, you, you don't know whether it's the, which one is causing the other, but it, the quality of sleep has to do with with the uh, uh, clinching and the the, uh, the relaxation and uh, health of uh, the muscles. And uh, one thing now is is now they are uh, researching about it is the adaptive adaptability. It's uh, how the patient adapt to to the uh, to to the load that he received in the in the TMJ and this is this is related to 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 genetics and the, the nature of of, of, of him. now they are studying uh, two different terms the, the adaptability and resilience uh, the adaptability it's something relating in genetics it's the it's the ability of the body to to, to heal itself and to cope up with 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 the with the irritation or trauma that it's subjected to our body. So so, so like when, when we see the X-ray and uh, there is some changing in in the TMJ, and still the patient doesn't have any any pain. So the the people they are different in in, in responding to to load. Some people they cope up with this load. Some they develop uh, the pain and complain. But when it, when it comes to resilience, it's how the body will take the pain. It's not all the body will take the pain the same, uh, all of them, because even the threshold of pain, it's different from one person to, the, to another person. So the, the, the resilience is something inside, and it's in, in, in his mind, that, that how he cope with, with the pain itself, okay? so. So that's why uh, people, if even uh, they will have the same load, they will respond to it to, uh, an, in a different way. So when we, when even even pain itself, it has it has a physical part and it has emotional part. So if we will work on either one of them, we will reduce the physical thing. That that the amount of pain will will, will be reduced. And also, if we work on the emotional part of the pain, also. The perception and the, the patient acceptance and the way he will take it it will be also easier for him and acceptable that's why it has to do sometimes we refer patient to psychologists that they can uh, talk to this patient and they, they will, will, will teach them how, how, how to, to adapt and how to uh, deviate their attention and so they teach them uh, they do uh, uh, 
lifestyle modification, how to do uh, relaxation. Uh, this uh, will, will, will help the patient in, in some uh, how. So for the treatment of uh, this uh, TMJ disorder, actually we uh, we start by by orienting the patient. The patient should know and should understand what's happening. It's not a, a, an organic uh, problem that he has a defect or tumor or whatsoever. So you, we have to explain to him what's happening exactly, and when he understands, that will relieve him to know the, the nature of, of uh, his complaint. Then we start simply by, by uh, anti-inflammatory uh, drugs, uh, muscle relaxants, physical therapy, uh, trigger points, injections. Uh, also, some, we, we need sometimes antidepressants uh, to to you know uh, relieve the stress if, if the, the stress it has to do something with it. Also, sometimes also we go for for injections and these injections it's promising nowadays. First, we started with 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 uh, uh, botox and and that will, will uh, when we give the masseter the temporalis. Uh, the lateral trigoid, medial trigoid, also the muscle trapezoids, the scalene, all the muscles that are involved in this pain, uh, when we give them the Botox, it will uh, uh, lessen their, their hypermobility and the, the patient will, will feel the, the relief. But now, now also we started using, we started using the, the collagen injections either inside in the in the uh, capsule or in the TMJ itself or all also the muscles around it and it's give a very good and uh, nice results that it will he help the TMJ to to with this collagen it 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 will it will uh, receive loads better than uh, before and also the muscles will 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 be um, uh, heal fast and and respond well to to uh, uh, loading actually i, I start uh, giving the, we have a company called guna that has this uh, this kind of, of collagen tropo collagen that we give it inside the, the tmj itself or the uh, md tissue or md uh, md muscle and md neural i am making this combination and i give it to the patient and it's it's giving me a very good results uh, so far. So as a junk therapy, we, we we give the patient to do some exercise, some exercise that it will it, uh, it will help him uh, relax the joint and the muscle. Also, the use of hot and cold com uh, compressions, and alternatively that it will improve the circulation of blood in the area. It also. Uh, we also it might transfer this patient to the psychologist, and they, uh, they will, so they will improve. They will teach them how to to relax and do life uh, uh, lifestyle modification. Uh, also, in improving the quality of sleep. Sometimes, if, as I said before, if, if the sleep is not deep, that it will not reach to that the muscles will will relax, and he will grind or or uh, uh, clench the teeth. So uh, yeah, considering the role of the psychologist uh, or the psychotherapist, it's, it's um, um, important sometimes in, in, in uh, treating the TMJ uh, disorder. Uh, all kind of treatment that we, we recommend, we, that it, it should be reversible. We, we, we don't recommend the surgeries that it, the open surgeries uh, that it's that you cannot reverse it so that's why uh, it's the nowadays it's not much into surgery uh, we, we do uh, maybe we, 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 we do also uh, arthrosynthesis that we, we, we make lavage and wash out the fluid inside so uh, inside the, the, the uh, joint that we put it in the upper compartment and we put two needles and one we introduce this fluid and the other one for the fluid to exit the, the, uh, the, the joint uh, for, for uh, splints we also we don't we, people will benefit of of uh, splints but 
uh, you know, one fourth of the patient will benefit of splints, and we don't recommend that these splints will be worn uh, to be worn for for a long time. That the patient will wear it 24 hours or uh, all the days and for for long time. This will make some changes, permanent changes in in the TMJ itself. Because the the jaw will be slightly open, so there is a difference in the position. If, if, if we keep the, the night guard for a long time that the, the tissue will, will, will adapt to that and will adapt to this new position and cannot be uh, reversible. So uh, this is a, a brief or uh, some ideas about how, how we deal and we treat uh, and we diagnose the uh, TMJ disorder and uh, it's, it's a controversial the way of treating it, uh, there are a lot of schools, but we, we, we me myself, I like to go into uh, more uh, conservative treatment, uh, and uh, hopefully you like uh, my lecture and see you uh, for next lecture.